Hello and welcome to another episode of The Flock Did I Just Watch? With your host as always, Kyle McLemore. This week we'll be recapping and reviewing the latest horror comedy film that has double the amount of Nicholas than your average movie. That's right, it's Nicholas Holt and Nicholas Cage in Renfield. Now, before we get too far along in the review, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as it definitely helps the show stay alive. And if you haven't seen Renfield and would still like to, make sure you pause now and return later as there may be several spoilers up ahead. That's right, this is your official spoiler alert. alert. Robert Kirkman, who is the writer of the graphic novels The Walking Dead and Invincible, supplies the story for Renfield, which tells the tale of Dracula and his loyal familiar, Renfield. Directed by Chris McKay, who up until now has directed a few of the Lego movies as well as The Tomorrow War, so this is his first big splash into the rated R category. The film stars Nicholas Holt as our main character, Renfield. You might recognize Nicholas Holt from most recently in The Menu, but he's also appeared in a few of the X-Men movies as Beast. Aquafina showing up as sort of our fiery policewoman as well as the love interest for Renfield. You might recognize her most recently from Shane Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings. Ben Schwartz in the film as well. He's popped up before in Parts and Wreck as Jean Raphael. And you might recognize him as the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. And of course, the man who needs no introduction. It's Nicolas Cage as Count Dracula. And so let's talk about some of the acting in Renfield, starting with our title character, Nicholas Holt. Up until recently, he wasn't really on my radar. I'd only really known him as Beast, like when he's jumping and flying all over the screen, all blue and furry. It wasn't until I saw him in The Menu that he really opened my eyes to like, oh, this dude is an actor. Gives a great performance in that movie, and I was expecting a great performance in this as well. But unfortunately... The filmmakers kind of handicap the dude a little bit. They kind of take away some of his acting ability by forcing him to do like a whole bunch of voiceover work. Right at the beginning of the film, there is a huge exposition dump where they freeze frame it like on his face. Like right before the action goes, he goes, er. It's one of those things where like the record scratch, er, and like the whole thing freezes. And he's like, oh, I'll bet you're wondering how I got into this situation with the voiceover. And it is a huge exposition dump. Hey, this is who I am. Hey, this is who I work for. Hey, this is what I do to get my powers. And unfortunately, the whole time that he's just dumping all this info, we're just staring at a still frame of his image. And it is just like visually boring as hell. He does do a good job of being really pathetic and makes it really easy for the audience to be empathetic towards him because he doesn't necessarily do a ton of good stuff to get you on his side. It's mostly like you feel so bad for him that you get on his side. Aquafina is an interesting component in this film because she, I do like Aquafina. She is funny and she does have a good energy and like vibe about her, but there is just this weird, they're trying to force like a romantic kind of feeling between Nicholas Holt and Aquafina, but it just doesn't feel like it's there. If anything, it feels like maybe Nicholas Holt might maybe feel romantic towards Aquafina, but there is like no, no reciprocation of the feelings at all that I felt any way on the Aquafina side. And it took me a while to figure out the vibe of this movie. It took me a while to figure out what kind of formula they were going with. And it wasn't until Ben Schwartz was introduced into the movie that I finally like locked in like, oh, okay, this is Dracula meets the Looney Tunes. Because up until the introduction of Ben Schwartz's character, it's sort of in the realm of like a serious kind of thriller movie. It still stays within the realm of like, all right, this is Dracula, vampires, looking for victims. And it's not until Ben Schwartz pops in that it switches into full Looney Tune mode. Ben Schwartz is literally jumping out of a car with a Oh, an armful of cocaine being like, I've got a prescription. He's throwing bundles of uh, cocaine at the cops. That's the level of wackiness in this movie. And Ben Schwartz's character is the closest thing to Bud's Bunny as you could possibly get. Like, he's basically bouncing off the screen the entire movie. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Ben Schwartz does such a great job of being so over the top silly and crazy that it 
turns back around again and becomes like good and becomes like entertaining and funny. And that brings us to the great Nicolas Cage as Count Dracula. Nicolas Cage has mentioned before that it has been a lifelong career goal for him to play Dracula. So this is a dream come true for him. And he plays it in a way that someone would play it as a dream come true. Like he is... You can tell he's having a great time playing Dracula, and it makes us have a great time watching him play Dracula. It's really, really fun watching him be not only very Transylvanian and like, oh, I'm Dracula, blah, but then also sneak in like little Nicolas Cage things like, I'm Dracula, I'm Dracula, the Prince of Evil. He just like throws in like these weird little voice octaves that are just like, oh, Nicolas Cage, you cannot help yourself but be fucking Nicolas Cage. And although the film is heavy on CGI, like there is like a ton of CGI, mostly when people's arms are exploding or people are getting ripped apart. That's when it's really heavy on the CGI. But there are some really great practical effects mostly on Nicolas Cage. It's almost entirely on Nicolas Cage when he's kind of like his in-between. He gets like really, really damaged in the beginning. So as the film progresses, he's kind of like going through his healing stages. And so you get different variations. Like first when he pops up, he's like, you can barely recognize him. And then later he's like a little bit better. But it's really fun seeing him act. And like, even though his like prosthetics are insane, it looks great. And seeing him act through it is really fun as well. Although the film has only a runtime of an hour and 30 minutes, it actually feels much, much longer. And I feel like that stems from jerky storytelling. Right away at the beginning, we get a huge exposition dump and like the momentum's flying, but then it like hits the brakes when we get Aquafina and like we gotta learn about her. And then there's like this ultimate crime family that comes out of left field. It's just really like the pacing is off. It doesn't feel like it's all one speed. It's like stop and go, stop and go. And that stretches it out. It makes it feel way longer than an hour and a half. So let's hit Renfield with our overall rating. Nicolas Cage as Dracula makes this whole movie worth it. There is some stuff that's not that great, right? Nicholas Holt, he's okay in the film. I feel like he's held back. Like, they're, they're holding him back by making him do, like, a lot of voiceover work. There's a lot of those freeze frame, and then we talk for, like, a minute. That stuff really kills the pacing of the film. And then there's the forced feeling between, like, Nicholas Holt and Aquafina. It feels like they're trying to force this romance, but then it just never really feels like... Either party really wants that relationship. I never once feel that Aquafina has any kind of feelings towards Nicholas Holt the entire movie. And even Nicholas Holt, it doesn't really feel like he's really into Aquafina that much. Like, there's a moment where it's like they're playing all the music and he's like, oh, like in love with her. But then there's really no reason, like, why are you into her? Or, like, are you going to pursue this? Like, it's just, like, it's dropped in the middle of the movie and then just, like, no, nah, okay, I just, I fell in love with her for a second and it's just, like, eh, I'm over that. Ben Schwartz doing everything he can to bring, like, a really fun energy into this movie. And he does a great job once you accept that he's basically just Bud's Bunny running around this movie. In a good way. <laughs> And although the fight scenes and, like, the violent scenes are pretty fun to watch, they get, like, overshadowed by just, like, this explosion of just, like, CG blood. It's, like, it's already pretty fun. I mean, there's parts where he's, like, you know, ripping people's arms and, like, spearing them through. Like, getting speared with the dude's own arm. Like, there are interesting and fun, unique fight scenes. But they become, like overshadowed and less fun when like the entire screen is just covered with just like cgi blood that looks like too red it looks too ketchupy so we're gonna have to hit renfield with a c minus that's right coming in a little below average it's got good stuff in it i mean nicholas cage as dracula amazing some of these like fight scenes and like the violent stuff really uniquely choreographed and like interesting to watch what doesn't work? Nicholas Holt and Aquafina, their characters are just not that interesting, and then trying to force them together doesn't feel organic or natural in any way. And then also, like, yeah, some of those fight scenes are really fun and interesting, but they're also kind of, like, overshadowed by this insane amount of, like, crazy-looking CGI blood that just doesn't look good if you felt differently about renfield make sure you comment down below let me know what you thought and if you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button as it's much appreciated and it keeps the show alive i am your host as always kyle mclemore and we'll see you next time at the movies